is the Avaya Podcast Network. APN. Technology, news, and information. All in one place. Next Gen 911, the cloud, and other over the top applications. What's up with that? Find out next on the E911 Talk Podcast, episode 114, recorded Saturday, November 17, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Now that emergency services, 911, 112, 999, etc., in the enterprise have become more mainstream in 2012, it's time for IT administrators to gather a baseline understanding of the technology so they're not victims to the predatorial marketing tactics that are sure to crop up. Many will sell based on the doom and gloom model. Your employees are at significant risk unless you buy the Save-A-Life 2000. Others will tout their innovative prowess in the marketplace. We were the first to invent this life-saving process for PBX systems. Yet others will just tell it like it is. After evaluating your needs, our team of experts is going to work with you to craft a solution that's both affordable and implementable. One of the reasons I got involved with E911 is that back in 1998, when I was working for a large global financial firm, we were faced with remediating 911 in our facility in Chicago, based on some new legislation that was going to take place. I remember back at that time, we were just about to sign off on about $8,000 worth of software with our PBX vendor that was supposedly going to fix the E911 location problem. Now, just doing my job, but before I would sign off on a PO, I wanted to understand exactly what I was buying and exactly what it was going to be doing for me. Did I need to supply a server? And what monthly care and feeding was this new system going to require? With no one being able to answer what I considered to be some basic questions, it became quite apparent to me that this topic was not well understood by many people in the industry, including myself at that time. I, like most people, was under the impression that my PBX was going to transmit critical life safety information to the 911 center, and that what I was actually buying was the little magic box that was going to send that data. It was at that point that I learned three important things. The PBX doesn't have the ability to send location information with a 911 call. The 911 centers were not able to receive any information other than a reference telephone number that correlated to some mysterious database back in the carrier network. And finally, most importantly, there was no magic box that I could just plug in and solve my problem. After coming back into the manufacturing side of the industry, it was quite clear to me that the problem of the lack of knowledge still existed in the industry, and I embarked on an education initiative, knowing that if I could teach people about emergency services, I could probably save them a considerable amount of money by not buying based on hype, but based on requirements that actually solved a problem. Voice over IP and the mobility that it provided to the user was the first challenge that enterprises faced. Now that was easily solved through technology and some correlation of information in the data network to a solution that would provide the PBX with the appropriate information when a 911 call took place. The next challenge occurred when tracking users at off-site locations became popular. This was easily solved by introducing a VPC or voice over IP positioning carrier that had the ability to connect any device originating an emergency call with any public safety agency as the local exchange carrier only had connectivity to the local E911 network. It was during this phase that several other cloud-based services were becoming popular. And because many corporations didn't understand the E911 problem, they used that model to remediate all the endpoints in the enterprise network. Now, although this does work, it may not be the most efficient and cost-effective solution. It does allow IT managers to throw the problem over the wall, where they can then report back to their management and say, problem fixed. But depending on the size of a company and the number of stations they're trying to manage in this particular model, people may start looking at the accuracy of the data as well as the cost of maintaining that data. At Avaya, what I've tried to bring to the table is a little logic. Logic based on fact and not fiction or horror stories. Fact based on how public safety operates and how understanding of information that is valuable to them. Again, I'll remind you that Cube 2C231 is no more relevant to an emergency dispatcher than the fact that you're wearing blue socks. Why? They need to dispatch services to your location. You need to make sure the building is accessible, 
And the way that gets done is through proper street address reporting on the outbound leg to the PSAP and then providing detailed situational awareness to your internal first responders that can provide assistance and be ready to meet responding emergency services and direct them to where they're needed. Now, placing some of your E911 solution in the cloud may actually accomplish this, but placing all of the solution in the cloud may not be the wisest choice. Part of the E911 remediation project is the discovery of devices on your network. Now, that can entail the correlation of IP addresses, switch port information, or additional data sources, such as LLDP or Active Directory. The bottom line is, if an application is in the cloud, it needs to connect to your network at a fairly deep level, which may not be acceptable from a security concern. Sure, it can establish VPN tunnels. However, that makes the solution more expensive and more complex. Given the amount of information flow between your private internal network and a public or cloud-based E911 solution, this may not be an acceptable topology to your data network or security folks. On-site notification is another key element to an acceptable emergency call architecture. If your solution is completely based in the cloud, not only do you have to be able to reach the cloud to process your emergency call traffic, but the cloud has to be able to reach you to let you know the event has happened. Now, the number one thing that would concern me there is the very event that I'm calling 911 about may be the very same event that's preventing me from reaching the cloud or the cloud from reaching me. With on-site notification being located on-site, even if I had an all trunks busy condition, I would still have localized situational awareness of an event that's taking place. And if I could reach public safety through other means, such as a cell phone, I would still have detailed information that could be provided to them upon their arrival. Now, if your IT administrator is a real technology geek and likes to be on the leading edge, there are plenty of opportunities to do so with your E911 environment. Start looking at big data and the correlation of information in your network and from your smart building that could be made available during an emergency event. And think about E911 as an over-the-top application that provides public safety with information that's useful to them through a back channel. Now that's quite easily done by incorporating a web URL into your existing legacy alley record. Not only does that allow you to simplify your alley database to a single entry that doesn't have to be managed, it eliminates the number one problem of the carrier overriding your station level calling line ID on 911 calls. So a little logic and understanding of how E911 actually works takes the number one problem, caller ID manipulation by the LEC to your main telephone number, and turns it into what you want the solution to look like, a single static alley record. That record contains a single static web URL. That URL points back to your DMZ and a web server that provides dynamic, detailed information about 911 calls in process. We're completely changing the game on how the problem of handling E911 calls in the enterprise can be corrected while at the same time significantly improving both the accuracy and verbosity of that data using common, open standard protocols that are in place today. Can E911 live in the cloud? Well, from a routing perspective, absolutely. In fact, as the network evolves and new capabilities become available, such as the NINA i3 architecture and additional multimedia information, that's exactly where you want your E911 to live, from a routing perspective. But that doesn't eliminate the need for localized functionality to provide location discovery, event correlation, and on-site notification. There are two sides to E911. Don't lose sight of which side of the fence are better suited to the various pieces of the solution. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency? This is the Avaya Podcast Network, APN.